Using configurations allows you to create multiple versions of a part, each with varying dimensions. In this example, I want to change some of the dimensions in this spoke wheel. In the Configuration Manager, you can see that only the default configuration currently exists. I'm going to add a configuration to create a version of this wheel with a larger diameter. I'll right-click on the part icon in the top of the tree and select Add Configuration to create the new configuration. I'll give this new configuration a name, type in a description, and also a comment. Below the configuration properties are some more options. The Bill of Materials options are pretty self-explanatory. I can choose how I would like the part to show up in a SOLIDWORKS-generated Bill of Materials. You can choose the document's name, configurations, or type in your own name. I'll choose to display the configuration name. Finally, there are some advanced options down here that give you more control over your parts. If you check the Suppress Features option, any new features added to other configurations will be suppressed in this configuration. By leaving this option blank, any new features that are added in another configuration will also appear in this configuration. I'll make sure this option is checked. The Use Configuration Specific Color option allows you to assign a different color to each configuration. I'll leave this option blank. This last option, Add Rebuild Save Mark, controls how a configuration is rebuilt in a model. Without going into too much detail, when you're working with a model that has multiple configurations, SOLIDWORKS only loads the essential data into memory. For example, if a part has multiple configurations, SOLIDWORKS will only load the active configuration data in its memory until you activate a different configuration. This keeps the file size of a model down, as well as the rebuild and save time to a minimum. If you check this option, SOLIDWORKS will make sure the configuration data is available at all times. This means that switching between configurations will be faster, but the file size, save time, and rebuild time still increase. I'll leave this option cleared and click OK to create the new configuration. Notice how the default configuration is grayed out, and the new configuration I just created is shown with a green check mark. This indicates that the new configuration is active. Let's see how to go about creating a larger diameter of the wheel for this configuration. The process is really straightforward. I need to change the diameter value of the wheel, which resides in the sketch of the first feature. I'll edit the sketch and increase the diameter value. Before I accept the new dimensional value, I can assign the new dimension to a configuration using this drop-down list. I'll choose this configuration and exit the sketch. The wheel becomes larger, as it should, because of the dimension change. If I activate the default configuration by double-clicking on it or by right-clicking and selecting Show Configuration, you can see the new larger dimension has not been applied to the default configuration. Now, how about configuring the number of spokes? I'll create a new configuration for a six-spoke wheel. The spokes were created using a circular pattern, and the number of instances is simply a dimensional value. To change it, I'll double-click the pattern in the Feature Manager tree to bring up its dimensions, and double-click the instance value. I want this change to affect both the default and six-spoke configurations. To accomplish this, I'll click the Specify Configurations option. The Configurations window appears, allowing me to select which configurations this value will be applied to. I'll select the six-spoke and large diameter configurations and click OK. Now, when I switch between the configurations, notice the changes are applied correctly.